I'm Jen, and this is Prague, the heart of Europe, and my adopted home. Subscribe to get an American's take on this enchanting city and all things Czech. Welcome to the adventure. Actually, this is Brno, the second largest city in Czechia, and the historical capital of Moravia. If you've never heard of it, think of it as Prague's little sister. The one that Prague likes to taunt and poke fun at and sometimes ignore altogether. Aren't big sisters the best? Prague and Brno have a typical sibling rivalry, or at least that's what the Brnazzi would say. The Brnaeans? The Berners? The Praguers? Probably don't even think about it. Typical big sister attitude. But I was sick of relying on Prager's opinion of Brno. I wanted to form my own opinion. So when the opportunity to travel for 24 hours to Brno presented itself, I jumped on the chance and jumped in my car. Five hours later, we arrived. Perhaps Google is not so familiar with the traffic situation on the D1 highway. Next time, I'm going to use mappy.cz. So even though we Americans might think of Czechia as a fairly small country, Prague is in Bohemia and Brno is the historical capital of Moravia, which makes the Brnazzi just a little bit different. Or at least the Praguers keep telling me. But how different could they really be? And could an American even tell the difference? We were going to find out. So the first thing we had to do when we arrived was to find public transportation. Brno doesn't have an underground metro system like Prague, but we heard that the tram system was just as reliable. Now I just had to ask a friendly local to help me find the tram. It's a good thing I've been studying Czech all these years. That's another thing. Moravians have different words for the commonest of things, like tramvai. They prefer the German elektrischeilinja, or schalina. Very suspicious. It's amazing buildings in America even stand up because you don't have all these guys. It's true. That's why they blow over in hurricanes. You need some more cement men. Because we only had 24 hours, we had to be selective with our sightseeing. My beloved law geek of a husband, of course, took me to court. How romantic. Uh, we're going to the Czech Supreme Administrative Court. So, Bruno, Are you in trouble? <laughs> administratively? No. Uh, I mean, we're all in trouble administratively in the Czech Republic, right? There's always some paperwork that we didn't do right oh. now. Uh, Is this where that happens? So this is one is this where the, they send our delinquent visa applications? This is uh, one of the three high courts for the Czech Republic. And uh, Brno is sort of the judicial capital of the Czech Republic. So they've got the Supreme Administrative Court, the Supreme Court, and the Constitutional Court. This is the, the best look. Fascinating. But let's get into some old Czech legends. Next was the Old Town Hall, where the Great Dragon of Brno apparently resides. Many, many years ago, this beast wandered into Brno and ravaged the town, eating the livestock and threatening children. Even the poor Babichki had to stay home and not go to the market for fear of being attacked. One day, a visiting butcher had an idea. He stuffed an animal hide with lime and let it for the dragon to eat. When the dragon ate it, it swelled in his belly until he died, saving the entire town from this savage beast. Typical Brno, inflating expectations since the Moravian Empire. I kid because I love. And when you're in Old Town Hall, you can also visit this very famous wagon wheel. Did someone from Brno invent the first wagon wheel? No, 
but someone from a different town cut down a tree, fashioned this wagon wheel out of one piece of wood, and rolled it 45 kilometers into Brno all in one day to win a bet. Hooray! Now don't you think the dragon is cool? I always forego typical sightseeing and prefer to see how the locals live and where they spend their time. My favorite thing about Brno was the Zelni Trh, or the cabbage market. The Zelni Trh, Trh, Trh. The Zelni Trh has been in this exact location since the 13th century, selling produce and farmer's goods to the people who lived in the town. and they even had a cage full of criminals in the center of the square so the children would have something to play with while their parents were buying groceries. We found the same hipster vibe that you can find in all of Prague's farmer's markets. There were cute ice cream trucks and burger trucks, but most of the shoppers seemed like locals who come to get their daily produce and gossip from one of the many stalls that are set up there Monday through Friday. My first bird chocolate of the season. It's good. You want some? Yeah, awesome. And at the Zelni I had my first run-in with my international viewers. And then I forced them to be on camera. So where are you from? Poland. And what is your name? Uh, yeah. Jakub. Justyna. Justyna. Jakub and Justyna. And what are you doing in Brno? We're having our COVID vacation. Oh, and, and why Brno? <laughs> because it's safe. Editor's note. This was September 3rd, before the cases started climbing again. It's time for everyone to put their masks back on. Yeah, and, and a lot of castles and uh, places. Beer. Yeah, a lot and of beer. places to see. <laughs> And they are very close to each other, so... Have a wonderful time in this yeah, country. Too. Okay, and stay safe. <laughs> On the edge of the square is the Reduta, which is Central Europe's oldest theater. And there's even an obligatory statue to the one international celebrity who played there. It's just so typical in this part of the world to have a statue with a plaque that says, here marks where young King Rudolf stopped with his band of merry soldiers to drink some spaja before going off to meet his death in the Battle of White Knuckle. Okay, fine. Having an 11-year-old Mozart play in your small town theater is kind of a big deal. Prodigy or not, I feel like he probably should have been wearing some trousers, no? Jen. Yo. Why Brno? <laughs> why, why not Brno? Brochne. <laughs> Brno gets a lot of heat from Proggers, or even worse, doesn't get any mention at all, and I just thought it would be a really good idea to find out for myself what Brno is all about. This is my second time here, but my first time in the summer, and I gotta say, it is nice. It is like a really nice college town. I don't know, what do you think? It's beautiful, walkable, and here comes my beer, so. Oh, perfect. Let's do it. <laughs> In fact, we are lucky bastards today. Are you feeling the burn? All that running around had made us starving, so we decided to seek out the most Moravian food we could find. All the dishes looked pretty standard. Goulash, pork knee, but Hamza did find a Moravian delicacy. Moravsky 
Vrabets. Vravsky, so it's local. Vrabets. 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 Sparrow. Okay. I mean, it's better than pigeon. The best thing about any Czech restaurant is that dogs are welcomed along with every other guest. Finally, our meals arrived and they were so much more than we expected. Did you get the breast or the leg? How big do sparrows get in Moravia? Is that a sparrow? This is a, uh, it's like a turkey. Oh, this is great. The sparrow tastes like pork. late night cocktail drinkers, but we had to stop by the bar Kierinje Existuje to get a nightcap before we went back to our hotel. It's Salzburg small for sure. But if you know what's up, of course they do. Before we jumped back into the car, I wanted to get a bird's eye view of Brno from atop the old town hall tower. So I have this friend, an American friend, who is very well traveled and he is obsessed with authenticity when he travels. He doesn't want some Disneyland version of a place. He wants the real, true, authentic place. And as I spend time in Brno, I realize the market, the, the restaurants, it seems to be for the people, the people who live here. Whereas sometimes Prague can become a parody of itself. It becomes what it thinks the tourists want from it. The heavy drinking, the pub crawls, and it turns into kind of like a Disneyland. Whereas Brno really seems to be authentic. I think I really appreciate that this is a town for the people who live in it, as opposed as a town for the people who come to get their picture taken in it. All the jokes that Pragers make about the Brnazzi is just jealousy about their cuter, hipper little sister. I wouldn't know anything about that. Perhaps the only thing keeping us from more visits to Brno on the weekends is all of that construction on the D1. Don't worry, I'm sure the Czechs will have it all finished by winter. Uvidíme se příští týden. Ahoj!